Hey everybody, this is Dawn, and for the next few weeks, I want to start helping you have better communication with your friends, family, coworkers, and loved ones. Why is this so important? Because we all delete, generalize, and distort information. It's part of the way our brain works in order to understand the world. We each have our own map of the world, and when you can ask specific questions, when someone else is deleting, distorting, or generalizing information, or when you catch yourself doing it, you can learn how to listen better, you can communicate more clearly, which cuts down on fights, it cuts down on confusions, it increases bonding and understanding. So first, let's run the show reel. Today, I want to start talking about a couple of ways we distort information as it comes in. So for example, we have this pattern that we call mind reading. Now what's mind reading? It's making an assumption that we know what someone else is thinking, feeling, or perceiving. Such as, well, I know they don't like me. For example, I was giving a presentation to a group of massage therapists a few weeks ago, and one of the women said, it's just hard when I can tell that my person doesn't like me. And so I asked her, how do you know they don't like you? What specifically do they do or say or not say that lets you know that they don't like you? And she paused for a moment and said, I don't know. I just thought they didn't. Now, when we're young, we make our model of the world based upon what we observe, gestures, the way that people interact with each other, body language, how our parents were in relationship, how our friends were in relationships, what our teachers were like, what our mentors were like, all of these things we absorb when we're young. And we start creating our world based upon those subtle cues that others do. For example, someone might look down at the floor and be thinking about something. And you might come in, let's say running late, and assume that person is really angry at you because they're looking down at the floor and don't have a happy look at their face. That's a mind read. So instead of making assumptions about what we think is going on in the other person's mind, we want to ask. Hey, I noticed you're looking down at the floor. What are you thinking? What's going on? When we hear someone do a mind read kind of situation, such as, and this is really popular, I hear this all the time, someone saying, for example, I heard this woman in a coffee shop saying, well, I know he doesn't like me because he hasn't texted me back in a half an hour. That's a mind read. And her friend was really great. She probably didn't even know what she was doing per se on purpose because it came instinctually. And she said, how does that mean he doesn't like you? Maybe he's just busy at soccer practice. Maybe he hasn't seen your text yet. Maybe he's busy at work. So why would you think he doesn't like you just because he hasn't responded to you? So when we look at how we're making assumptions or how other people are making assumptions about how they're liked, how they're perceived, I know they're angry. How do you know they're angry? You can ask that question. I know you must be pissed off at me. What makes you think I'm pissed off at you? And we can start really understanding the source of the information so we can communicate more clearly. Maybe it's a misinterpreted body language. Maybe it's that someone was really stressed out and didn't say, hey, I love you or give a hug the way they normally would. And the other person made an assumption about that and decided they knew how the other person was feeling. So my challenge for you this week is as you're running around, start noticing people making mind reads or making assumptions, making distortions about information with incomplete information. How are you or others interpreting gestures, interpreting body language? And where is that coming from inside of you? you can start realizing if you're the one assuming they don't like me, he must not like me, she must hate me, 
They must think I'm an idiot. They don't think I'm capable. What is the evidence that you have? And is that truly evidence or is that you having confirmation bias? In other words, already believing something about yourself and then looking for things out in the world. Because if that's what you do, stop it now. Just stop it. Because you are amazing and we get to stop making those assumptions and really get curious about what other people really believe and know about our beauty, our strength, and our power. Remember, you are love, you are loving, and you are lovable. Namaste.